<laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to we'll go back to another video and today we're with my boy Blake. What up? Guys? Um so he owned previously a Mustang. Yeah, back in the day. Back in the day, a long time ago. And he's kind of familiar with stuff like this. For me, I mean, honestly, I was about to take it down to Ford and get it fixed, and he told me, don't do it. Do not um, pay the money. Do I not. probably would have paid a buttload of money. So, <laughs> huge shout out to him for being here and helping me out. A lot of you guys said that it doesn't look bent. I mean, it's bent, guys. We'll show you when we pull the wheel off and everything behind there, but it is literally just going like this. Yeah, this part of the tube, the axle tube itself, is like. Bop. It's just Lilic bop. right here. This thing yeah. just turns like that. Because so. the wheel did this and did that. So there's no components that like people are like are <laughs> people are like just replace those and you're good to go. Yeah. So that's not it, guys. I'm sorry. I, I honestly wish I didn't have to buy all of this. You have to buy all. This was like almost almost two grand, which is just ridiculous. And then also they're so cheap, guys. Like they took off all the bolts and everything. Like dismantle it, people. Come on, like leave that on. And then this stuff's all wicked now. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of a. Uh, a bit of work there, but modification with it. <laughs> we'll make it work. We'll make it work, but we're also going to get fluids and maybe some kind of sealer around there as well. Uh, we'll get all that stuff situated first. The so first things first, we're gonna have to take off the wheels, remove the calipers, drop the the diff. Um, how hard is this from level one to ten? A six. I think it's mostly like yeah, guys. Awesome. This thing is heavy because it's, it's heavy. Yeah, you don't want to throw out your back doing it. That's gonna be oh man. Okay. Well, for the most part, it's take bolts off, put the new one in, put bolts. In. <laughs> Easy <laughs> enough. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, just put it back together. It's like Legos, kind of. Just kind of. Bent Legos over here. Honestly, I don't think it's that hard, but I mean, it just it's just again big parts, and I'm scared of being underneath the car. Blake doesn't really care. I think he's I think he's seen his life flash before his eyes a couple times. I've worked under a car enough. So. <laughs> So we got the new rear tires. We do have all the original wheels. We just need to get this stuff off and just get straight to work. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys can see. Even this is, looks like it's just out of place, guys. Like it's supposed to go straight down, like like this. But you see how it just goes, just crooked. So I mean, once you pull it out, you guys will definitely see it. Even we ordered new bolts for these as well. We have new leaf springs. We have literally everything new for the rear suspension. Uh, but we do need to drain a bunch of stuff, right? Like we gotta drain the brake lines first, or? Uh, yeah, we'll take the brake calipers. Actually, we'll probably just have the brake calipers. Uh... I was gonna say they could hang off, but technically they're like installed with the line and we have to transfer the line over. Oh, okay. So anyways, we'll probably disconnect the brakes like right underneath at the bulkhead, which is like a little spot back there. Okay. And then we'll have to capture the fluid to where it doesn't like get all yeah, your every... parents' garage. Good times. <laughs> nope. Okay, guys, we almost have this thing out. We're just trying to disconnect everything from this whole rear axle so when we actually drop it, it doesn't rip any of the brake lines or uh, the the e-brake stuff and all yeah. that good stuff. So we're almost done with that. And then once we're, actually, we're pretty much almost done. We just need to release the leaf springs. Yeah, we got four bolts there. At least to drop gonna, it. I mean, to get it out. <laughs> to and get it out. Do the same thing in yeah, reverse, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then uh, what else do we gotta do? We have, so we removed the, uh, the drive shaft as well, guys. So that's only four bolts. Nothing too crazy. If we need to end up replacing this, we may have to drop the exhaust just a little bit to get that screw up back there. The other side is to drop the fuel tank. So hopefully we don't even, we're gonna check the other side. I don't think we need to on that side anyways, but this side we might, might have to. Hey. All right, guys. I don't know. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. You guys see that? 
Do you guys see that? Oh, that's that's a bend of a lifetime. Look at the holes. So that's where it uh, oh, that's connected wicked, to the yeah. loop spring and then it gave way there. Bent the, uh, the spring perch plate. Bent the axle tube. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's out. <laughs> I wish I could say I was finally over you But that's not the truth mm -mm. Everyone always keep falling in love again The fuck's wrong with them? I don't understand Maybe it will pass by someone save me For a pass out, I'm too lonely To be done, I'm a drink at this place Yeah, we're just getting it all together, guys, just to throw it on the car, and then we're going to take care of the rest of the stuff. Poor guy's gotta get home eventually, so <laughs> we at least get this thing in there because it's super heavy, and then all the stuff that I can pretty much do on my own, I'll get it to it tomorrow morning, hopefully. All right, guys, so uh, me and Blake, we just pretty much, also shout out to my brother, he came out here too. <laughs> we gotta give him yeah. the credit. Uh, we pushed pretty much the new diff where it needs to be, the whole new rear end, um, and pretty much, what are we doing now? We got the diff slid in here. Basically, we're gonna put this little guy underneath here, and we're gonna put the bolt, uh, U-bolts over here. And put them down there, put the bolts on, uh, start to jack this thing up, and then we'll, we'll pretty much just cinch it down. So really, it's eight bolts to get the uh, differential bolted into the car, right? Okay. And then we just have the drive shaft, another four bolts, and then we got all the brake stuff. Brakes, uh, ABS, wheel speed sensors, um, calipers, all that stuff, so then it's like, Basically a brake job after that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, well it shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Wish us luck, guys. <laughs> I could say I was finally over you, but that's not the truth. Mm -mm. Why am I the only one? We've been whacking the shields, and uh, it's pretty much straight. So we got to put on the disc here in a second. We got all this stuff bolted up. I'll put the shock back in because I took that out just to have like more access, more room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got the disc bolted got the up. Drive shaft back. In. I mean, not the, what's it called? Drive shaft. Oh, drive shaft back in. But I just want to say quickly. I saw, I saw Blake actually straighten this thing out with what were we using? Oh yeah. The details, bro. I appreciate you. <laughs> he I wasn't did. just hammering it out. He was actually looking was to like make it perfect. To it up. <laughs> now that is some mint work. <laughs> there you go. So if you guys ever have issues with a spring that's just a pain in the ass, what you can do is use zip ties to compress it. Just kind of put it around both sides, and you do that, and you tighten it up, pull these damn things. And then all you gotta do once you get the piece on, you cut it. Nah. See how that works? Mint, bro. More tools. That's a neat skill, bro. Right on, dude. <laughs> Wish I could say I was finally over you, but that's not the truth. Mm -mm. Everyone always keep falling. At this point, guys, we pretty much got pretty much everything assembled. He's just finishing up a few other little things for the brake lines. Uh, we're gonna have to bleed the brakes, and then after that, we pretty much should be. Is it just bleeding the brakes at this point? Yeah, just bleed the brakes, and then eventually um, put fluid in the dip. Eventually. Oh, in the in the dip. Okay, yeah. we're gonna put the <laughs> when we get on the brakes. Yeah. But I need to do the new seal on the the, the differential. So I'm gonna just remove the rear plate, seal it um, with whatever. What's it called again? RTV. So RTV, and then just bolt it back up. Shouldn't be too hard. And then just put new fluids, pump it in until we're good to go. Yeah. 
Should be pretty easy. Hopefully, I'll be knocking that out tomorrow. Um, I'm also gonna be installing the two curtain airbags in the truck tomorrow as well. So pretty much get ready for smog and brake and light and everything. So hopefully, we should be able to complete this truck other than this rear damage. Again, hoping that once we put the wheel on, everything's gonna be straight. We did, have, we did just replace the whole rear end, so everything should be 100% straight, unless there's something wrong with the, the frame itself. So, yeah, um, I think it looks pretty. It looks straight. Right now, with these eyeballs, it looks straight. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I mean, dude, it looks it looks so much better. Oh my yes, god, man. I'm so. I mean, it only costs about two thousand dollars later to get to this point, but hey, it's going to be an awesome truck and honestly a pretty inexpensive truck. Yeah, half of what it's originally cost, and, and I'm gonna get my money's worth out of this. I'm gonna tow so many cars with this thing, dude. <laughs> Oh my God. And also guys, so this is Blake. If you guys don't know who he is, he's Blake's Garage. So he has his own dedicated, he actually do a lot of BMW stuff. A few other builds. He started off, I think from a Subaru. Yeah, I started with Subaru stuff. Got rid of that because it's garbage. Like <laughs> probably most uh, BMW people, some of the older guys, uh, they now have F82 M4. I've done a bunch of stuff too, track that car. I have one E36 that I'm building, uh, that thing's We've done all the suspension, all the stuff on that. So I have videos, DIYs on all that stuff. I have an E30 track car with the S52 swap, full build series on that. And I got another E30. Yeah. You a do. Porsche Macan Turbo. <laughs> so I have a bunch of European cars. <laughs> Which I'm honest, so I was supposed to like, his M4 is right over there. He's like, it's your track beast at this point, right? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> I was getting my M4 ready to go to the track with him. That's why I promised you guys I was going to track it because I was ready to go with somebody. You know, things happen in life, but we do plan on, I do plan on getting another track build on the channel. This, hopefully this truck's going to help get that thing to the, uh, the track if anything ever happens so we can tow it back. But um, I know, what weekend was that? What, what weekend did everything expire? So I was trying to get you to go to the track. The, the same weekend. It's the same weekend. Yeah, just um, should have gone. Hey Blake, I think you're missing something, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, how is be, how are you supposed to break, bro? Something's supposed to be right about <laughs> here. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this guy. Yeah, I think we'll take that off again. <laughs> So we're bleeding the brakes on the F-150. This is the same procedure for any car. Um, this is an awesome tool. This is the Motive Power Bleeder. You put brake fluid in here, pressurize the master cylinder reservoir over here. Then all you gotta do is pump it up to 20 PSI. Go back to your caliper in the back over here. You're gonna start on the farthest caliper from the master cylinder. So this is the back right rear. You guys don't know. And all you gotta do is crack it. Um, and then we're gonna notice we got fluid coming through. As you can see, it's pretty dark, pretty black. It should not be black and you'll see bubbles in there. We should not see any bubbles. That's what we're trying to get out. Air compresses. If air compresses and then you uh, press the brake pedal, you die basically because it just compresses and just gets harder and harder and you don't have brakes. So oh, man. you got to do that whenever you take off a brake caliper. It's pretty easy with these tools. It doesn't make a mess. And uh, yeah, well worth the investment. It's what like mm, maybe like 150 bucks. <laughs> Which is like, it's something, but here's something. You want to go pay someone to do it? There's 150 bucks. Yeah, good point. For the rest of your yeah, life. that's honestly how I see tools as well. Yeah. Moment of truth, guys. Finally putting on this wheel. Let's see if this thing is straight. That is literally what we spent all this money for at end of the day. <laughs> Now that is what I'm talking about guys. Now this is perfectly aligned with the truck. So finally, after replacing the leaf spring in the whole rear end, this side is good, which is the main side of concern. So the other side should hopefully go according to plan. And then hopefully this stuff will pull it out eventually, but mainly we are just focusing on getting this truck ready and rocking to the road so we can actually drive it down to the body shop and all that good stuff. We can finally start using this thing guys for all the BMW builds. Special shout out to my boy Blake. And what time is it right now, dude? 10.30? Is your wife happy? Yeah, she's cool. <laughs> she knew it would take a while. 10.25. Yeah. What we got here at 5. We started Five, at 5.30 roughly. 5.30? Roughly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Probably a little earlier. A bunch of hours. I gotta go to work in the morning at 6. But I'm so sorry, bro. It's all good. I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> I said, Nor, don't spend your money. I'll help you do it. It I'll was gonna... It would've been a... You, like, at, grand, at you know? least, yeah, that would have been like, I'm just so happy at this point. Like we have a few little things to get ready guys and this thing's gonna be on the road, hopefully tomorrow will be same video. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been a long day. 
And uh, yeah, bro. Again, huge shout out to you, bro. Again, Blake's channel. Blake's channel is gonna be links down below. Again, huge special shout out, my dude. Yeah, dude. All right. Help me get to 100k. I'm at like 76,000. Subscribe. 25,000 of you guys. I just need you to go click. <laughs> I don't, you make me happy. But, just yeah, do it. Just a couple would be cool too. That would be pretty ideal. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Take care. Good night. Later. And what's up, guys? This is day two. We're back with the F-150. I want to knock this out as soon as possible, like I said to you guys. So I'm trying to knock this out in one video. Obviously, yesterday I didn't get to upload. Um, and I was supposed to upload, but, you know, things happen in life. Anywho, um, because I want to get it all in one video for you guys. I don't want to make it two parts. One good, long, entertaining video is better than two short videos, for, according to you guys. So I might as well bring what y'all want to the channel. So yesterday's work, again, huge special shout out to Blake. We finally got the wheel and everything perfectly straight. So I'm super happy about that. Now, the only thing with this truck is pretty much cosmetic. I'm already starting to throw things in here that are going to be taken down to the junkyard, like the other axle the, and all that stuff. I mean, leaf springs and all that stuff. The messed up tire. Yesterday, everything closed. You weren't able to finish the job and it was pretty late on Blake. He actually lives like 30, 35 minutes away from him and he has a wife to get back to. So huge special shout out to him for staying that late to help me work on the truck. But yeah, this is the next day. Um, we did need some actual, um, one of the brake calipers, the, the actual drain or like the, the plug itself to actually put flu uh, to drain fluids out of it is uh, it's gunked up. So we needed to get a new one of those. We need to pump new fluids back into the brake calipers just to make sure those are all working properly. Um, we actually had to get some diff sealant uh, cleaner to actually clean the, the pan before we actually put a new seal on it. And then we have all the new fluids. Uh, we only need three bottles, but I bought four just because this one's completely empty. Might as well have an extra bottle just in case we need it. These are the two new curtain airbags. I don't even know if you guys saw the interior. We had a seized up, oh, oh hold up. We had a seized up seatbelt. We replaced that. We had the module, which we reset that as well. So this piece is actually supposed to go right there. I went ahead and just removed it anyways, left it removed because you have to replace both current airbags. We need to drop the headline and replace both of those. We could reset the lights and everything should be good to go in terms of the interior. And hopefully in this video, everything should be good to go in terms of exterior. And the only thing we'll have left is literally cosmetics. That is the dream of this video, guys. Let's go ahead and get right back into work. I wanna knock out this truck in this video. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is remove the fill screw for the differential and then the differential pan. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go ahead and get our brake cleaner and just finish cleaning this thing off. Before and this is the after guys. So looking a lot lot better as just some water still on here I need to actually uh, get the rest of this water off But I uh, basically got all the goo off of this cleaned it all up So that's really good. Make sure you guys have brake cleaner. It's really useful now I just have to clean off the seal on the differential itself. This might take a little bit. So uh, yeah Here's the before and that is the after boy. So pretty much it's pretty much ready to go. Let's go ahead and get the good stuff. I've never actually used this before, but I saw a video and it doesn't look too bad. And uh, basically how it works is um, you pretty much put it all the way around, kind of like you make your own gasket, but you go underneath the screws, not around the screws. So when you seal it, when you put it through the screw, the, the fluids won't come out of the screw holes. So make sure if you guys ever use this stuff to just go within the circle. That's according to Blake and that just makes uh, a lot of sense. So let me go ahead and do it and hopefully I do it right. See so yeah, ya guys, my first attempt, honestly not the greatest. Here's the bottom. We gotta make sure the bottom is 100% sealed off, which it is now, uh, but I kind of messed up in a few places. I just kind of put a little bit more where it needs to, where pretty much messed up. The actual thing itself is really hard to squeeze out. So like I have to like re and whatever and then keep going. So anyhow, um, I think we're good to go. I'm going to let this rest for about 15 minutes and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Now that you have the pan pretty much hand tied, we're gonna have to let that sit for an hour before torquing them all down to 10 foot pounds of torque. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is, and let's go ahead and start working on the interior and taking apart the roof so we can saw both curtain airbags.
All right, guys, now that I got pretty much the roof coming over to this side, I should be able to work on the other side. It is a complete mess in here, but hopefully you should be able to get those airbags in there. Uh, but if we actually touch the airbags or anything, let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick and just disconnect the battery because we do not want the new airbags deploying right in my face. That would be no fun. After looking at this airbag guys, I finally figured out where that thing goes and that thing unfortunately goes right back here. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to move this so we can access those bolts. So uh, I guess more taking things apart. All right guys, so I watched a video and removing the rear seats will take me about an hour and I don't really wanna do that. So I found a way to finesse myself through there and I can see the bolts that I need to get out right there. So I think I'm gonna try to just finesse my hand, do the hand tools, get in there, pull it out. And if I could do that, guys, honestly, I'd rather do that than spend an hour taking all this apart and then using some power tools on this. Like, honestly, just work smarter, not harder. All right, guys, passenger side airbag out with the old. Let's go ahead and put the new one in. And after a lot of trial and error, guys, we finally got this airbag all inside. Now it looks beautiful. It's fully tucked in exactly where it needs to be. Thankfully, this car does not require any rivets. It's all literally screws. So we have the current airbag and it is fully connected now, thankfully. So that's one side down. Before I actually put all this together, I need to put the roof up. So uh, let's go ahead and do the other side. Hope to God we can get that, unplug that sensor quickly because the sensor is the hardest thing. Other than that, everything else goes in pretty easy. So I cut back to you guys. Hopefully we have this side complete. So three, two, one. And just like that, guys, you finally have that airbag installed as well. So now I think it's gonna be full time-lapse mode, hoping the rest of the interior goes in pretty easily. And uh, if we do that, guys, this thing's gonna look absolutely stunning, like perfectly perfect interior. I'm super excited. And just like that, guys, we went ahead, we finished the complete interior for the F-150. It is a little bit darker. Let me go and turn on the flashlight. But yeah, guys, we got the full roof in. The only thing I don't like is those hangers back there. For some reason, they are not going in right. So I'm probably gonna take this down to LED Solutions and hope they can help me with that. And right there, it's a little bit sagging from the airbag explosion. Other than those two issues, we don't have any other issues with this roof, which is absolutely perfect. Everything went in very smoothly. And again, all the airbags are in place. So hopefully when we reset the codes, everything should be fine. I went ahead and ordered this scanner off of Amazon. I'm gonna have it linked down below for any guys who wanna use this. But yeah, I don't have a universal scanner. I always end up getting one and I end up losing it. So I had to get another one off of Amazon. This one has some pretty good reviews and it should clear the airbag light. This is one of the main reasons I went ahead and picked this up you have the battery reset the srs system we can actually clear the lights after replacing the airbags this is the reason why i got this one exactly oil reset light and I have a bunch of other little things but um that's the main thing i got it for honestly is the srs reset and uh it's for it's universal so i mean my favorite one for bmw is carly but for for, for this truck that's what we went ahead and ordered so let's go ahead and plug it in hope to god hope to god our airbag light goes away guys another cool feature with this obd is the fact that the port has a flashlight so i'm going to use a flashlight find where it needs to go and then plug it in that is the coolest thing ever <laughs> and as you guys can see we have the airbag light so let's go ahead and get on our scanner boys and as you guys can see we have these three codes the restraint system anti-lock brake and the transfer case control module so we have three codes here let's go ahead and reset the main one that we need to reset right here all right it says it's been successful let's go ahead and start up the car Hope for the best, boys. Now that's what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and try to load these two into the differential and hope to goodness we can get this in easily. <laughs> And just like that, guys, we have to pretty much all the fluids back in the diff. Everything is good to go in the diff. And then the interior, everything's good to go now. Um, the only other thing we have to worry about 
is the caliper. Um, I just need to bleed it on this side. I don't know if it's too big of a deal, but we did unplug the caliper and we reconnected it. So I'm pretty sure we have to bleed it. But other than that, we have the new diff uh, gaskets. Everything's good to go on that. That was an absolute mission, plus the entire mission that was in the interior. We finally got all the airbags. The interior is 100% pieced together, and thankfully we have no lights on the dash anymore, so that's amazing. So hopefully in the next video, we should be able to get this thing registered. Fingers crossed, hopefully nothing new comes up. And obviously the aesthetic, we're gonna have to fix it as soon as possible, but priority is getting this thing on the road because it is a truck. It doesn't have to look beautiful, it will look beautiful, but it doesn't have to look beautiful right now. We just need it to be drivable. Without further ado, guys, if you guys are enjoying this build, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys enjoyed this long video, make sure to smash the like button. Without further ado, guys, I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.